CCP. This is our ligand. One of the things that we're frequently interested in are which residues, which amino acid residues, are contacting that ligand. And so we can ask that question in PyMol. So 2BCJ underscore GDP is just our ligand. We're going to come down here to the contact one. Now right now that's identical, but we're going to modify that selection. So to do that, we come over here to A. Now you actually don't need to click on that. Uh, I just do that so you know where I'm clicking, okay? Uh, you can click on A. We're going to come down to modify. Everybody see modify about halfway down? And we're going to come, now we're going to modify that selection. We have two main options, around and expand. Around uh, means I'm not, my final selection is not going to include my starting selection. It's only going to be those residues that are around my starting selection. So I'm going to remove my starting selection from that uh, selection. Expand keeps my starting selection and says, I'm going to include all the residues within a certain distance, but I'm also going to keep uh, my starting selection. I want you to use the top option around, and I want you to come down to the second half residues within four angstrom. If there's any atom of that residue that's within four angstroms of my ligand, I want the whole residue to be picked, not just the atom. And the reason I'm doing that is because we're going to color those residues. And if the C alpha atom doesn't change color, we can't see it in our sequence window viewer. So the color in your sequence window viewer is based on the color of the C alpha atom. And so uh, we're going to pick residues within four angstroms. Now, you're going to see uh, this highlighting change. Uh, before we had just GDP, magnesium, aluminum, fluoride, and the five waters, now we have a bunch of other residues, which we are going to color, um, let's pick orange. That won't look nice, but it'll work. <laughs> All right, so we're going to pick orange, uh, and we're going to show as stick, and then uh, under action, we're going to zoom in on that region of the molecule. And you'll see here that we're showing all the residues that are interacting with the GDP. And then as you scroll on down your sequence window, you can see what those residues are in your sequence window. Everybody see that? Uh, so that's how you can look at contacts to ligands. You can also look at contacts between molecules this way. Let's say you want to know the residues in G alpha Q that are binding GERC2. Then you can select GERC2 and look for contacts. And if you select GERC2, that's going to pull up residues on both G alpha and the G beta gamma, right? Uh, so you're going to pull up residues on G alpha and G beta gamma. So you can look at all different kinds of contacts this way, protein-protein contacts, uh, protein-ligand contacts. So uh, that's a really great way of beginning an initial analysis of your structure. A lot of times you may want to zoom in on those residues. In many cases, a researcher will mutate some of those residues that are involved in binding. And so you can show what the residue is doing and why mutating that residue affects binding of your ligand. Moving on, we looked at the GDP contacts. Now we're going to color and render in sticks, which we did. Uh, one thing uh, I want to do, I'm going to zoom in again on that area. Sometimes you want to measure the distance uh, between your residue and an atom in your ligand. And you want to decide, is that a hydrogen bond or not? That's fairly common to do. Now, it's actually kind of hard to do here when we're in a display that the spheres are full uh, size. 
And so what we can do is we're going to come up here and we're going to type a command set set space and then sphere underscore scale space equals space and then 0 0.3. So set space sphere underscore scale equals 0 0.3. And so our spheres are not going to be full size. Right now they're 1.0 scaling. But we're going to make the spheres small for the GDP. And then for the GDP we can show the sticks. And now our GDP in aluminum fluoride and water are in what we call a ball and stick format. And that's different than the purely stick format of the protein residues. Okay, does everyone see that? And so uh, I'm actually going to change my contacts. I'm going to color them orange but by element so I can start to see where some of the uh, hydrogen bonds might be. So uh, this residue here is either a glutamine or, a, or an asparagine. If I click on it, it's a glutamine. It has an oxygen and an N. Now that uh, nitrogen could be hydrogen bonding with this aluminum fluoride. And uh, let's say we want to measure the distance between the, these two atoms. You can pick any two atoms you want. It doesn't matter. But just kind of zoom in and pick an atom that's in your protein and an atom that's in your ligand. Now we come up here to wizard. And we're going to turn on measurements. Now as soon as you do that, what you'll see happen is you'll see the option to please click on the first atom. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on this atom. And then it says please click on the second atom. And I'm going to click on that atom. And sure enough, it puts the dashed line there with the distance 2.5 angstroms. So any distance smaller than uh, 3.2 angstroms uh, generally would be 3 to 3.2 would be considered a hydrogen bond. Uh, if it gets small enough, less than 2.5, you have to start wondering if it's more than a hydrogen bond, is it a covalent bond? Uh, but that uh, 2.5 is a good strong hydrogen bond. Then we can say done. So that's, and if you want to uh, have some of those dashed lines, sometimes you see hydrogen bonds donated, denoted in figures, you can turn that labeling off and then play around with the size of the dashes, the widths and the spacing and that to get a nice look that you want to uh, look at. Yes? Uh, right. So under wizard, you turn on measurement. Okay, wizard up at the top, measurement. And then it says please click on first atom and click on second atom. So you click on your two different atoms and you should see the line show up. Now if I click on a different two atoms, it will show up in a different measurement. Uh, do you need help with that? You got it? And then when you're done, just say done. So under label for that measurement, uh, Hide, I'm sorry, you can hide your label under H. You hide your label. Generally, uh, I recommend not using the labels in Pymo. Uh, it's better to go into PowerPoint or to go into Adobe Illustrator or Adobe Photoshop and type your labels in. But you can do the dash lines in Pymo. Those come out nice. So what I want you to do is kind of zoom in somewhere on your structure. Uh, we're not going to take time to cover how to make a nice figure today. It can take a lot of skill and it actually takes many hours sometimes depending on how complicated your figure is to get a really nice figure. If you have trouble getting a nice figure that's not too busy or get your coloring to work out, again, uh, come see me. But today we're just, you know, just kind of zoom in on something that looks somewhat reasonable. We're not going to spend a lot of time on it. Um, one thing I want you to notice is that if you zoom in 
uh, you'll begin to see that your edges are not smooth. It's kind of a crude rendering uh, of your figure. And Pymol does that so it's quick to rotate and things like that. You don't want to save this right here as your image. If you want to put this in a PowerPoint presentation or figure or grant or whatever, you actually need to ray trace it, which is going to smooth out your images. So if you look at your atoms here, you'll notice how rough they are around the edges. If you come up here and click on ray trace, and it'll take a couple seconds, maybe even a couple minutes, depending on how complex your figure is, then you should see a ray traced image. You'll see your dashes become really nice, your spheres come nice. You get two effects. You get shadows and you get uh, a depth cueing. So you'll see a depth cueing here. Parts of the molecule that are further away are shaded and parts that are closer are brighter. And you'll see these shadows uh, on these cartoons back here. You'll see shadows from the rest of the molecule. Now, shadows can help. Sometimes a complicated figure helps sort it out. But if it's too complicated, then I recommend turning shadows off. I frequently will turn shadows off when I'm making a, a publication quality figure. Not always, but many times. Uh, I rarely turn depth cueing off. So if you want to turn those off uh, under settings, you can come down here to rendering. Shadows, you can say none. And then hit ray trace. And if you have a complicated figure, that just makes it simpler, makes it a little easier for the eye to interpret. We're a little too honed in. There's too much going on. It's a little too complicated of a figure. Uh, and shadows uh, then slow things down, I think, a bit. But those are just some of the hints on, uh, OK, so we've looked at distance.